So today we are going to look at macrophages. Uh, macrophages are very important immunological cells. And uh, just recently we talked about um, a group of other cells which we call granulocytes. And um, in some of them, we had um, some of the immunological cells which had a polymorphonuclear kind of um, morphology, which simply means that the, um, the, the, their nucleus were, were actually taking different kind of shapes. And we talked about things like neutrophils and so on. So today we're going to look at um, um, another group which basically are mononuclear phagocytic um, cells. And in essence, basically, they have uh, a simple single nuclear, okay? And then they are phagocytic in nature. So um, the kind of cells that we normally put under this group include monocytes, which basically are phagocytic cells that are normally in circulation. Well, we have another group which we call macrophages, which now are found in tissues. So monocytes are normally found in circulation, while macrophages are normally found in the in the in the cells or fixed in the tissues. So sometimes now the monocytes sometimes you'll find that now as as they go into the cells, they they actually become macro macrophages. So we need to know that distinction. So monocyte, a monocyte is considered um, a white blood cell that is in transit uh, through the blood, um, which therefore ultimately becomes a macrophage when it is fixed um, in a tissue. So we have to know that they are phagocytic in nature. And in essence, that is the, that is the major function of macrophages. They have other functionalities, but the major function is basically phagocytic in nature. However, we have other things like uh, they can become antigen presenting cells, and so on. So once they're activated, they, they will normally take up the pathogen or the antigen and then gulf it, then um, use other mediators or other chemicals that it, it has and other enzymes that we look at to actually dissolve it, okay? So um, what we need to know here that monocytes are normally in transit and macrophages are fixed in tissues and the major function is phagocytic. So, um, how do monocytes now move to macrophages? And what are the some of the differences that happen when a monocyte now moves into a, a tissue and then becomes a macrophage? So th th there's just some differentiation that happens on these uh, monocyte uh, cells. And once they move into tissues, they now become bigger, uh, almost five times than the way they were. The purpose of that is to enable them even do more uh, phagocytic uh, uh, functionalities. On top of that, um, once they are able to they actually move, um, then they increase their phagocytic ability and um, they produce more of the enzymes, like um, hydrolytic enzymes. These are just enzymes that are produced um, to, to enable the breaking down of the antigen or the pathogen that is taken up. Uh, also, it begins to secrete um, different um, soluble factors or a variety of other chemicals that we look at. Um, so its intracellular organelles also increase in number and complexity, and it makes it basically that that makes it more phagocytic in nature. So what we need to know is that uh, macrophages are better at phagocytic function compared to monocyte because of all these improvements that are made when um, when um, a macrophage now is in, in the tissues. So we have different um, uh, types of uh, macrophages that we can uh, get depending on which location of the tissues they're actually in. So like um, other cells, um, we have, they have different functions and they are found therefore in different tissues. And the names that the macrophages can be given differ depending on where exactly they can be found. So when we have them in the lungs, we have, uh, they're called alveolar macrophages. We have um, macrophages that are found in uh, connective tissues and they are called histiocytes. So when they're in the liver, they're called Kupfer cells, and then mesangial cells in the kidney, microglial cells in the brain, or osteoclastic in the bone. So what we need to know, all these are macrophages, but the names just vary depending on which uh, tissues we are talking about. So how are macrophages, how do they now function? How are they activated? or how do they go about their business? So we, when macrophages um, have not encountered any antigen or pathogen, um, they, are, they are basically in a dormant state, okay? However, once they, they get 
um, challenged or they get this um, antigen and we look at some of these things that um, uh, can activate them, they become now activated. Okay, so macrophages can be activated by different things uh, like uh, different cytokines or some compounds from the antigen itself. So some of the substances that actually can actually get a macrophage from a dormant state to an activated state, uh, like um, some um, cytokines like interferon gamma, which are produced by T helper cells. Okay, so sometimes you might find that T helper cell will confront an antigen then as T helper cells normally do, they produce cytokines to call for help or recruitment of other immunological cells. So some of the cytokines that are produced from the T cells are interferon gamma, which now go and activate the macrophages. And the macrophages now become active and they go to help in um, the killing of the pathogen or basically to engulf it. Other things like bacterial uh, lipo, uh, lipopolysaccharides, like the endotoxins that are produced by bacteria, or the, even just the cell wall, the peptoglycan cell wall of the bacteria, or even the DNA material of a bacteria can actually activate um, a macrophage and make it now more potent. So these are just some of the example of substances that can make, can activate a macrophage and make it start um, working. So the activated macrophage, uh, macrophages are um, basically very important than the dormant ones or the normal ones that are just um, in the tissues. And, and in, 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 a, in a way, basically, where they become more phagocytic or their phagocytic abilities becomes more pronounced. Now, also, the ability to kill becomes even higher. And on top of just the phagocytic abilities and killing, um, becomes a better antigen presenting cell okay and we look at how exactly uh um macrophage presents um the cells and this basically they're presenting they're presenting a, a peptide or just a, a portion of the antigen to another immunological cell also uh, it, it activates t cell response in more effective manner so normally when macrophages have engulfed another um, antigen they will release also uh, some chemical substances that will call um, other T cells, okay, and make them now more effective. So by secreting the various cytotoxic proteins, they help in eliminating um, a broad range of pathogens um, like viruses, other tumor cells, and bacterial cells, okay, which maybe are intracellular. So that is what happens when a um, um, uh, macrophage is activated, okay? They become more phagocytic, they kill more, they're able to present better and they're able to call for um, um to basically activate other T cells. Okay. So we have already mentioned some of the functions and um but we're going to look at two main ones and then others. The main function of a macrophage is, is phagocytosis and we already mentioned. Then we look at uh, how it does antigen presenting and then we have other uh, functionalities. So on phagocytosis basically this is the this is the number one function or the major function of um, macrophages. And basically what it does, it just engulfs the antigen or the pathogen. And the mechanism of killing basically is once it is engulfed, there's some enzymes that are produced from within the um, macrophage, which now end up killing the um, organism. Okay, so it can do that by using reactive oxygen or nit nit nitrogen um, uh, toxic uh, species that are toxic to microbes and also the, there are some uh, proteolytic digestion that can happen, okay? So phagocytosis of bacteria, viruses, and other foreign particles is the most important function. And the macrophages on the cell surface normally have the FC receptor. And this FC receptor, uh, as you can remember, is the FC that is also found in immunoglobulin. Yeah? So like when you talk about immunoglobulin G, has the same FC receptor like um, that uh, interacts with um, yeah, the FC receptor in macrophages. So once that happens, that means then IgG can uh, facilitate ingestion or basically opsonization. So when 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 the immunoglobulin G attaches itself to an antigen, okay, because of the FC receptor, it it will now um, call the macrophage or it will mark that specific antigen. For phagocytosis and that is basically what we call the process of opsonization. Apart from just the FC receptors in IgG, we also have other 
um optimization uh, elements like um a c3b c3b is um a clipped protein from like the classical pathway of of the complement system okay so the complement system produces some uh, elements so uh, like now the c3b uh which now um makes that uh, bacteria or that antigen basically be marked for phagocytosis so that's why it's said it to be a very potent uh, opsonin or basically helps in the process of opsonization which is basically making that organism uh, or that antigen for phagocytosis so after ingestion <clears throat> so we're assuming this is a macrophage and it has taken up um, uh, an antigen or whatever a foreign body like a virus so the once the the virus or the antigen gets in after it's ingested the phagosomes they are phagosomes phagosomes are now these sacs here that uh, um can that can can end up that now encircles the um the antigen or the foreign substance and then fuses it with the lysosomes the lysosomes are the ones that um uh, have the elements that will lyse or basically break down the antigen so the the antigen enters once it enters or it is ingested it is held by a um a phagosome that suck uh, that now ends up fusing with the lysosome once it fuses it forms a phagolysosome so a phagolysosome is simply a combination of the phagosome and the lysosome and then now the elements the, that the, the, the proteins so the the enzymes that are found within the isosome help in in killing now then the uh, antigen so um the phagolysosome is killed by a reactive oxygen or you can you can have reactive nitrogen compounds or we can have other lysosomal enzymes that now either lyse or cut or kill once that is done remember the phagosome is still there it will go and release and release out them um the broken down antigen which is now killed Okay, so that is what happens uh, typically. The other functionality is antigen presentation, and I've already talked about this. So whatever we have just mentioned earlier about the uh, engulfing or all that. So macrophages normally serve as antigen presenting cells that display antigens, and these end up activating T lymphocytes. So whatever we've just talked about, an antigen being engulfed, then it is be being broken down, so sometimes um now the the, the, the um uh, this macrophage will break down the elements but use one of the proteins and put it on this on its surface so that it can present it to t to t cells okay so after ingestion and degrading the foreign so this part we already know so the pathogen is taken up okay it enters like here now it has been um engulfed it is it is it's in the phagosome it is broken down now once it is broken down a piece of it is carried normally with the help of uh, mhc which is the major histocompatibility complex and then the mhc helps to present it or put it on the surface of a phagocyte so it's like a phagocyte shouting around and saying now hey this is uh, uh, a part of what we have captured as a foreign substance so the fragment of the antigen are presented on the macrophage cell surface uh, normally in conjunction with the um, MH, mhc class 2 uh, for interaction with um, the t-cell receptors eh? so like some t-cell receptors like now the cd4 helper or basically the the, the, the t-helper cells will come and then um is able now to attach on this or basically identify or interact with uh with this um presented uh, antigen so and then then it will activate uh, the T effector cells. So basically, apart from just engulfing or breaking down uh, and killing the organism or the uh, or the pathogen or the antigen, it also presents it on the surface. Okay. Other than that, so um, we can have um, ingestion of just um, uh, um, uh, in addition to just ing ingesting microbes. Macrophages can also ingest um, other deadly host cells, like the ones that uh, we have dead tissues of our own because of like trauma, and we can uh, end up having um, those those uh, cells being uh, phagocytized by macrophages. Macrophages also 
um, they can recognize and then also um, gov apocalyptic cells. These are cells that have been programmed for cell death. So um, that is also a very important uh, physiological process that uh, helps to basically eliminate um, the, the cells that have died um, via apoptosis. Um, on top of that, and very important, macrophages promote um, the repair of damaged uh, tissues by stimulating new blood vessels, what we call angiogenesis. And this is done basically through also the synthesis of the collagen um, matrix of, of the vessels, basically. So macrophages are also very important for blood vessel uh, growth. Okay. Now, we mentioned some parts of um, what macrophages do, like they end up releasing some chemicals. So we'll also just finish by talking about the cytokines and ma macrophages. So macrophages are known to produce three main kinds of uh, cytokines, interleukin-1, uh, tumor necrosis factor, and interleukin-8. So interleukin-1 that is released by macrophages is important uh, in the activation of T helper cells. So once it releases, it is able to activate T helper cells, and then now that that um, sequence of events can start happening. Basically, now recruiting T cells and making them active. Uh, then TNF basically plays um, an important role as a mediator in inflammatory processes or reactions. So that is also very important. And then interleukin eight uh, is able to attract other um, immunological cells like neutrophils, which are these are granulocytes, and also other. T cells to the site of infection, basically recruitment. So that's now when a macrophage encounters a, a pathogen, it doesn't, it's not left alone to handle the whole issue. It releases these cytokines to call for other uh, cells like neutrophils or T cells. So thank you so much. That is about um, uh, macrophages, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.